just enter the you know it's, it's, uh, technically we're trying to to find ways to motivate people especially if let's say for example you want to uh, start multiple income streams because you know nowadays eh, it's, it's not easy to survive on one salary particularly if you have a family you know or you have other people depending on you you know or maybe yeah. especially when you're living living in a big household and you find that maybe it's only you and your parents working you know and things yeah. are just not working out or also yeah. maybe when you've got debts you know you have to pay off that car or you have to pay off that bond so yeah so hence uh we, we're just trying to uh, look at how people you know like in, in all walks of life you know how do they how do they make it you know and yeah for example, those multiple uh, forms of income streams if, you know, they are working for them, you know. And yeah, but be, be, before we go further, uh, I think like from, from, from Forbes magazine, Forbes magazine, uh, uh, they highlighted actually five reasons uh, actually why people would, would start a, a side hustle, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to call it a hustle because actually the meaning of a hustle is actually when you look at the dictionary or Google, it's actually uh, a negative. It's more like swindling. So when you say you're hustling, it's not like you're swindling or choosing yeah. a person. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to say it's actually, in a way, it doesn't sound like a, like, like a good term. But they say that, uh, firstly, it allows you to achieve uh, financial independence. Mm-hmm. Secondly, they say it allows uh, greater, it allows you to be actually more, more stable. Uh, and actually, uh, there's more scalability. You can also yeah. live your dream life. And you can also be able to work remotely from home. So first and foremost, we are aware actually that you know uh, the type of business that you're involved with is actually forever living. You know, it's under forever living product, which is uh, uh, based on a network marketing model. So tell us, man. Uh, uh, so far uh, in that business, how how have things been going? What pushed you actually, you know, to start such a venture? Uh, you know, and were there may, maybe other ventures that you could have started probably? Why did you choose this particular one? I lost, uh, forever a, day, uh, I lost a okay. You actually cut a bit for a minute, then you were back. Oh, oh I'm sorry, then, like uh, uh, I meant. Hmm. Yeah. You were where you were saying that um, the business that I'm with, um, you know, that it's forever living products, and then I lost you for a bit, and then. You came back and you were saying something along the lines of um, why forever, I think, or what are other income yeah. streams that are... Mm-hmm. We were actually, actually like asking actually why, why um, did you choose forever living products, you know? What, what pushed you to choose it? And weren't, weren't maybe other, the other, like maybe uh, other ventures that you could have maybe gone for? Uh, why this particular one, exactly? All right, so um, basically I chose forever living First and foremost, when I joined the business, I had to started working. So I studied um, Bachelor of Science in Physiotherapy at the University of the Western Cape, right? And so mm-hmm. um, I started working on the 2nd of January of 2020. And then mm-hmm. um, I was super grateful for my job. Like I was really, really happy, you know, with um, the high, high employment rate in South Africa that just keeps on going up. Like I was truly grateful to God that I could have a job, you know, straight after varsity. That was a big for me. It was a, truly a win and I was super grateful mm-hmm. to God. Mm-hmm. But then um, I remember um, getting my first, <laughs> my first um, salary um, month end of January and I was like shocked. I was still grateful, but I was like, I cannot believe that I suffered and struggled so much only to get paid this much. You know, it was, it was just too little for me because I've got big dreams, thing, you know, like for myself and my family. And when I looked at my salary, I just knew from the word go that it was never gonna cut. It, <laughs> it was never. And so I decided to see, like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna pursue another stream that could help me generate income. You know, growing up as a young girl, I've always been like very interested in property, but I think we both know that like you can't just start property and you don't have like, you know, a capital to begin with. And so um, I sat down and thought to myself, you know what, I can't, I can't say that I'm just going to jump straight to property because I'm going to need um, some sort of like cash injection for that. And so I had to sit down think, and explore um, other business opportunities that um, have a potential of like great returns, yet you start with low capital. And the network marketing industry on its own, like as a very vast industry that it is with so many businesses under that 
very huge umbrella um, is, is, a, is an industry where a, a person starts with a very little start up, but the returns thing are amazing, you know. So I remember going into um, basically exploring this industry and looking at the companies that are under this industry and forever was the third on that list of businesses that I saw there. And I was just going and reading through, but the most important thing for me was um, knowing what do they sell because I understand that I have to be selling something. It's a network marketing business. So I have to be selling something. So I looked at that and um, I also looked at the compensation plan. And I I must say, without even thinking twice, I knew from the, when I read about Forever that this is what I wanted. I was really interested to go and explore the other adventures down there. And that's basically how I chose Forever. I looked at the products and for me, the market was just vast because we literally have products for literally everyone in every age group. And we're not just closed into, um, let's say, one category of products. It's very vast. You know, like there's something for everyone forever. And that for me was like, okay, then I can like make a lot of money even if the recruitment um, is not so good. You know, I was just thinking of it because I needed the money. And then, um, of course, the compensation plan as well, like truly stood out for me. And that's why I chose forever. And you Thanks. know, like in terms of uh, in terms of also like uh, recruiting people for the first time, because uh, uh, you know, as a person, you, you know, yeah. like this thing of recruit, recruiting people and making presentations, it requires like a lot of confidence. So, as a person, like, did you grow up as a confident person, or did you have to learn first? You know, uh, where did you get that uh, the, the the confidence from? You know? Because you know, you know, at times. At times you'll go street to street, you know, like trying to convince people, you know. But mm-hmm. I think at times maybe as soon as you get the first rejection or the second rejection, you'll be like, yeah, uh-uh, this is not for me. But for me, what yeah. made you to keep going, you know? Uh, mm. um, I'm, go- I'm first going to answer where you asked me if if I grew up as a confident person. Um, I didn't grow up so confident as a child. You know, I had so many flaws. I was the tallest around my friends and I that made them think that I was older, you know, like those things truly get to you as a baby when you see you, when you know that you're young, but people think you're old because of how tall you are, you know, like I've always been such a tall girl. And most of my friends from the schools I went to were like usually very shorter than me. And um, that sort of like made me keep to myself in a way, in the sense. But then again, I am mm-hmm. raised I was raised, am raised still by a very strong and powerful woman. Uh, My mom is my like role model and inspiration, you know, because she literally, um, she, she did everything for us thing when she had nothing. Like we knew that like we didn't have much, but the much we had because of how hard she was pushing for us was enough for us. You know, we grew around um, a tavern. My mom had like a tavern and a shop, you know? So, um, I think also the essence of understanding just how important having a business is started from there. You know, I was truly inspired by my mom and my mom is is not even like as literate as I am. For example, my mom doesn't even have grade 12, but still being pushed. You know, I remember when she went and bought a very old Isuzu KP200 so she could be able to transport kids, you know, basically just growing her streams of income and not just looking at the shop and the tavern to give her money. She went and bought this um, old car that she tried to fix and made it ruled with me and then she used that to pick school kids and that was another source of income. So um, her making all those means and me seeing just how much of value those income streams added to us as a family, I feel like that truly... Um, got like, you know, nailed down to me that it doesn't matter what you do in life, but you must always have a business. And I understand when it comes to business that there's always going to be rejections. I, I feel like another important thing as an entrepreneur, you have to um, take care of, in fact, um, take your self-development quite seriously. Like learn about the business world, learn about entrepreneurship, you know, watch podcasts, listen to podcasts, Watch YouTube videos, like just cut the pattern to those that have made it. Read books, you know. Rejection is part of the game. Like you cannot grow your character as an entrepreneur if you don't get rejected, you know. And also, if you get one no, it builds your character, and one yes just essentially builds a business. So that's how I take it. Like I never take rejection as personal, and I know that they are not rejecting me as a person, but the opportunity, and mainly because they are not so enlightened about it. Also, because hello, it's a great opportunity. So yeah, that's about it. 
I think I do, I do get you, I do agree with you on that one, you know, especially like when you want to start something, right? Maybe let's say, for example, let's say, for example, you're starting, you're starting a channel, right? Maybe mm -hmm. on YouTube, on Facebook, and then you, you find that maybe the viewership is actually, your first time the viewership is like, you know, this, you know? But like you say, you know, uh, as soon as you start reading books, as soon as you start watching what other people do, you know, uh, then every you know, starts, uh, uh, starts opening up. But I think at the same time, I think our problem is that we also want things to, to happen for us, like, instantly, you know, uh, True. which is which is not uh, possible, you know, which is really, really not possible because we forget that as soon as we start something, it's more like we are planting a seed. So we, we say that the journey of a thousand miles begins, you know, yes, with one foot. So that one foot, is, so, so, so that one foot that you are stepping on, it's actually a seed that you are planting. You know, it's more like a tree. You know, a tree a, a tree doesn't just grow. You know, and just uh, and then then you just see bananas. They know it's, it starts yeah. like bit by bit. You know, sometimes yeah. it takes years because I think also also biblically as well. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when you look at when you look at how how, how the people in the past uh, uh, you know in the Bible times, you know how they became successful. You know, yeah. most of them it took them it could take them fourteen years. 20 yes. years, you know, 40 yes. years before, yes. the, before they can reach their destination. You get what I'm trying to say. So some of us, it's more like, hey, we want things like, we want it now. If you, if you don't get it now, you know, you really, really go back and just throw it. Uh, but let, let, let's move on. Let's move on to the next question. But let's move on to the next question. Uh, and then like, uh, we, we, just want to, we just want to that business. So in terms of that business, you did mention, because I was going to ask, like, what are the benefits of joining of joining that business and then secondly besides the benefits you know since you joined that business because i know maybe you joined it three years ago what, what have you achieved so far you know okay um so um i think when it comes to answering what are the benefits of the business it's mostly going to come with um like what you're asking is a sort of follow-up question or the second question mm -hmm. um what have i achieved in the business so basically the benefits mm -hmm. of joining the business is making money <laughs> The benefits of joining the business is making money. <laughs> That's what I can say. Like, you make money, and of course, when you make money, you can change your life. You know, like, you can get the things that you've always desired. So, I joined for a mm -hmm. three years ago. Um, and um, one of, like, I'm just going to mention the, the biggest things that I have achieved through this business, right? So, my dream, when I joined the business, like, I've always wanted to, to buy my parents their dream car you know and at the time i joined and i was thinking my dad was like really like ill he had just been diagnosed with cancer and um his health was just declining you know and i i feared him dying without realizing his dream you know like i, I truly feared that because i know how much it is important and i know how much it is fulfilling to achieve something and have something materialize something that you've always wanted and like I'm, I'm telling you now that like my parents had been like really sacrificed a lot for us. They had nothing, but they still made us like grow up comfortably in the sense, you know. Um, so I was like, you know what, God, I just need this to work for me. I remember joining on the first of June, and we're deep within the pandemic. I told myself that I would push, you know, like I, I truly pushed. I cut down on so many things. Think I'm one person who used to love, you know, having fun. I still love having fun now, but like. I've grown to be very responsible and I respect my time and I respect what I do with my time. Not to say that I'm a boring person. I don't go out. I, mean, I do all those things, but like, you know, like I, I weigh, I weigh my priorities now better than I used to. So like I had to cut down on so many things because I, I had to understand also that being an entrepreneur, like in order for you to elevate, you will have to separate, separate from certain people, separate from certain spaces, you know, from certain things. You know, so um, I did exactly that and I worked so tirelessly on my business. And hey, six months down the line, I was able to buy my parents their dream car. And it's not just any car. I bought them their Audi Q5. So my dad's dream car has always been the Audi Q5, which I, I was able to buy for them just six months of joining network marketing. The crazy thing about network marketing thing is that it doesn't matter when you join. You know, like there's these um, false stereotypes that network marketing only works for people that joined it when it first came. For example, a, a certain network marketing business is only gonna work for people that joined it when it first came, do you understand? But like with forever, I, I, I choose to can differ from that because I joined forever and forever was already operating it for 23 years in South Africa when I joined. 
So forever living is like, no, 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 for 22 years, sorry, because I know that I am, what? I think I'm a year older than forever. Yes, I am a year older than forever. So forever living came to South Africa in 1999 and I was, mm -mm, in 1998 and I was born in 1997. So, so many years later, the business also changed my life. So basically it's that like i just want to break that you know where people say these things work for people that joined them when they came hey i joined forever 22 years after it has been operating in south africa and i still made it so yeah i got them there audi um q5 and remember i told you um when i had just started the presentation you asked me why forever that like one of the other businesses that i've always wanted was to venture into property right and then after i had bought my parents their dream car i felt like who bit of a relief you know i've got that out of the way now i can focus on like venturing into my other business which is basically property that's when i went and bought land that is very really close to a high school it was not even land actually it had already um had like a five bedroom house kind of vibe that i renovated and um made it you know to be conducive for students and then i added block of flats so i basically have a hostel very close to a, a high school and then also um, I bought land that is overseeing the beach. You know, there's a, a very beautiful beach when you drive down from my state, it's called Fulega, it's close to Fulega Reserve. So I bought mm -hmm. land there. So I have like a very big, um, beautiful piece of land for the beachfront. And um, I'm, 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 I'm like on a process of saving up to actually build what I want to build there because I don't like also credit, you know, like I don't like doing things on so I want to build it cash. I don't want even cash pool to know my name. I don't want build it to know me by name on their books and everything. I just want to pay them their money and then they give me my stuff and then I build. And then, yes, and I also bought um, another house in Malin, which is like a, a small, my, our small town, which is like really developing of late because we have, we have a mall now, we have like spas, we have everything. So, you know, with a lot of shops coming in, there's going to be like a lot of people coming in. The job market is getting opened up. So I was like, you know what? It's great for me to invest there as well so that I can have rental property, which I'm um, currently renting now, just two bedrooms. And then I'm busy with another project just very close to that two rooms, um, basically to accommodate more people. And I also bought myself my dream car as well. I'm driving a very beautiful Range Rover Evoque and I bought it for my 24th birthday. And I stay in a, in a very remote area in the Eastern Cape. That's how I was struggling with network as well when I was <laughs> trying to download that. Like, my coverage is not so perfect. But then I decided that, you know what, like, um, I cannot be making my deliveries sting in my very nice and beautiful car. Like, I can't make my Range Rover so common, you know. Like, everywhere I'm going, I have to be driving in this Range Rover. You know, when I buy bread, I don't go to a shop because I don't have any nearby mall. I have to go to the Makula shop. Mm -hmm. If I forgot from town i have to drive to the next um like you know um somalian shop and like i can't be packing my big car here so i was like you know what? i just need something to, need to move and then i bought myself another car um nissan micro so those are the i would say the biggest things i've achieved like i've quite achieved a lot i'm of great help at home like oh my god like yeah like forever has truly really changed my life. I don't even know how to explain, but there's so many things that the business has made me to be able to do for my, you know, my, my, my parents and myself, my siblings, my nieces and nephews. It's truly been amazing. Still is. Okay. Yeah. No, I hear you. I, 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 I think we're still struggling a bit with the coverage on your side, but it's, let's just pray. Let's just pray it goes well. But, but then, like, you know, like you, 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 like you said a lot, you said a mouthful, right? And I feel like, you know, you, these are some of the stuff that, you know, what, that you sit down, you know, with another young person, you know, and explain to them, you know, that process. It, it, it makes me move to my next thing. Is there, is there any person that, that you are mentoring at, at the moment, you know? A person who can also, like, follow up, you know, in your footsteps, you know? Maybe someone, yeah. you know, like, maybe like, oh, Maybe like once you are old, you can say, you know what, this person was developed by me or this leader, you know, uh, came from my hands. You know, I, 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 are there any particular persons and how is that, how is that going, you know? Okay. So network marketing, as, as its nature stands, it's a business where you sell and recruit mm -hmm. people. Right. So basically my job is to not just recruit these people to come to the business and then just teach them like that. I have to 
basically train these people staying. Like I have to give trainings to these people and ensure that these people know exactly what they're doing and ensure that these people know exactly how to get to the top. Do you understand? So that is my day-to-day basically um, role to, to, to motivate people, to mentor people, to show them the way, you know, as network marketing nature stands. So yeah, there's quite a number of people that I'm like mentoring so that they can also get to where I am and beyond actually. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next part. But I also li- like the fact that, you know what, uh, the main motivation was actually yeah. like your dad, you know, uh, having cancer, you know. And also mm-hmm. at the same time, you know, your inspiration also comes from your mom, you know, like, yeah. who started that habit, you know what I'm trying to say, you know. But uh, I just wanted to want you to you know, uh, on your side, uh, the the travel life. How was it like, or was it rough? And uh, how did you how did you survive? <laughs> how did you survive that life? Right? Because I always wonder, you know, like uh, uh, people, you know, like who, who who live in houses that have travelled, you know, how they survive? Because you know, old people always wanna people always wanna fight. You know, people always wanna take out their knives. You know? So how how did you get to to, to survive that? That's just a uh, a friendly question, that one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um. What I loved is the fact that the tavern was not in our yard. So it was not in our home state, you know, like it had like its okay. own separate, um, place, but not so far from home. And my mom mm-hmm. always said the rules, which people would break all the time, that they are not allowed to bring knives inside the yard. So like she, she always had someone who would search people, but once an incident happened, I don't, we don't know how the person hid the knife, but an incident of people stepping one another happened, but thank God no one died. We bless God today for that. Still, so basically, um, as kids, while we're still young, we're not even like allowed to go there as often. Like it would be a thing of going during the day when my mom is there to do stock taking and all those kind of things. Just, just help with the crate, you know, like getting the bottles into the crate and all those kind of things and just packing them away nicely. So like it's it, we were never like full time day because my dad would like would say it's it's a no like it's a no it's a no place to go and also kids were not allowed you know so we were kids as well it doesn't matter if the business belonged to our home but we were kids as well so we we're not allowed just like any other child to be there. No, oh, that's very very interesting. No, that's that's very nice. We're just gonna move on now to to the next one, right? Because I know uh, this type of business, you know, like once you succeed, uh, the, the forever living one, it allows you to travel. So t- tell me, how many countries have you traveled so far, and or have you traveled to so far? And actually, in those countries, what have you learned about the culture and the people? And the last follow up question would be. Would you want to move to, to one of those countries uh, one day? So um, I've actually never been out of the country. That's number one. Um, so basically, once you join Forever, right? Like I told myself that because there is a travel incentive at Forever, I don't want to take myself out of the country. The first time I go out of the country, I want it to be with Forever. You understand? So it was a thing of putting a, 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 a basically a target for me to work towards, a goal for me to work towards. Do you understand? Because like I could like commonly say that I'm going to take myself to Dubai because it's not so it's not even expensive to travel abroad. You can have 30k and you'll mm-hmm. be sorted. You can go to Dubai or wherever and then come back. Mm-hmm. You know, with all these travel agencies also that make things so easy mm-hmm. for us. But then I've never been out of the country because, like I said, I wanted it to be with forever. And I'm very excited to say that I'm just counting months until I go to Dubai, Bangkok, and Pattaya. Because I have qualified for the free international trip with forever. So unfortunately, I can't answer the other questions about the culture of other countries and all those kind of things because I've never been out of South Africa as a fit. But when we do this again in October, I'll tell you more about the culture of Dubai, Bangkok, and Pattaya. <laughs> But uh, in a way, like why? Why those countries? Why the Asian countries specifically? Why do you wanna? Why do you so, wanna go there? That's a that's so a huge bit about true. Amagula. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, what Forever Living does is to give us um, travel incentives, two travel incentives each year, right? And I've qualified for the one that is called an Eagle Manager's Retreat. So 
they don't, we don't get to choose where we want to go. It's a surprise from the company. So you are busy working for this incentive and you don't even know where you are going. So it's just that kind of vibe. So we didn't know where we were going. For example, next year, they've already revealed that we are going to um, Italy and Europe. Um, we're going to the D- Provonic. I can't even, and, oh, let me just check on my phone quickly. But we, we, we tour in three countries next year on a boat. So it's, it's, that, it's that kind of vibe. We don't get to choose for ourselves. The company is the one that basically tells us where we're going. So for example, next year, we're going to um, Venice, to Provonic, Trieste. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to those um, three, three, three places, basically, that are based in three countries, two countries, I think, Europe and Italy, I think. So, yeah. So I didn't choose. It seems like you guys are having a five-star treatment there, hey? I'm telling you. Yeah, so you like guys are having a five-star treatment there. Huh? Mm-hmm crazy it's crazy it's crazy when i when i think because you know um <laughs> they book us first class you know like when, when we get to to the to the airport like it's just five star treatment everything five star and if there was anything about five star i'll give it that this is this is more than five star treatment and then when um we get to the airport fine we fly with emirates right uh business class, first class, sorry. And then we fly to wherever. And when we get there, we tell them what we want to do and they arrange all those activities for us. And then there's activities where they make us do as, as the whole forever family, basically. So it's truly amazing, man. It's, it's, it's the five-star treatment I've never thought I would experience in my entire life. Three years later, forever. Okay. Let me look at the comments. I think I see people have connected. We once had six, now we have three. I don't know how many we have on LinkedIn. I don't even know how many we have on YouTube. But the comments on Facebook. Uh, okay, can you see let's see this is morning at Alpha. No morning. It's not evening, not morning. Eh? Morning or evening to you. I don't know why I like saying morning in the evening. Uh, mm-hmm. And then there's Joy to say, Joy to say, Charity to words, Alerato Kodisan. Or she was just uh, writing one of your quotes where you said, in order for you to elevate, you will have to separate. Oh, yeah, and then she yeah. says as well, you have achieved, and then she says you have achieved a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. Well done. Because I'd also say well done. I'm like, I'm like, wow, at such a young age, you know, because we were born in 1997. And this is how much, how much you've done. You're like, young, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? It's really amazing. And, uh, I feel like also, in a way, you're setting a benchmark for, for other people as well who are looking to make it. Yeah. Because, you, you know, like your 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 main motivation, right? Is it's both your parents, you know, especially your mom who managed to to make it out of nothing, you know, and then your dad as well. You wanted to fulfill this dream of buying an action uh, because other people, you know, they'll they'll just look at the circumstances and be like, yeah, I am helpless, you know, I am very very helpless. But I'm sure that you know what when they listen to us, they really know that. Yeah, you know, this is possible. Because I, I believe that uh, we as human beings, at the end of the day, we do have power, right? Irrespective of the circumstances that we find ourselves in, uh, irrespective of what we go through, but I think each and every human being has got power. It's just all up to you on how you're going to decide to unleash that power. You know, you, you're born with it. You're born with a skill. You're born with a talent. You're born with a brain, you know? And eventually, we human beings, we are born, you know, uh, the same way or in a similar way. But that's why we are all born in the same way. Now. There can't be a similar way. It's the same way. And then when yeah. we die, you know, we all go to we all go to the grave. You know, so at one point you can go to the grave today. At another point you can go tomorrow. You get what I'm trying to say. So yeah. I guess it's, it's things like those, like that, that are supposed to even motivate us more. You know, uh, because I I remember also one 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 good pastor. I think at our church was also saying, you know, when you pick something. You must do it, you know, up until you become great at it, you know. I think at times you also need to aim for greatness, you know. Uh, uh, you know, at times we think that greatness, you must first have good food, you know, for you to be great. Or certain things must be available. But actually, you know, for you to achieve greatness, you know, mostly you achieve it when you have nothing, you know. True. Because right. out of nothing... Out of nothing comes something actually comes something much greater. So I think I'm gonna move on to the last question. You know, and let's say for example, if anyone wants to start a business, you know, how would you encourage them to start? Okay. So um basically if you want to start any business, you have to make sure that you 
look at what interests you. Like you need to search within yourself, you know, like find it within yourself to know, to ask yourself questions like, what would you do if there was nothing else in the world but that? So what is it that you would do even if you were not paid to do it? You know, that one thing that you would do. For example, I love people. Hence, I studied um, what I studied and also hence I'm in the business that I'm in. I love people. You know, so for me, mm-hmm. it's not so hard to, to do what I'm doing because it comes from a place of love, love for people, you know, and you cannot do this doing if you don't have love for people. It's not about being social, like it's not about being a sociable person. You just have to love people and truly care for people, you know, and then in that way, you can be able to, to make advances in any business, find what you are passionate about, just find your niche. That one thing that moves you from inside out. Find that. I just need to get the job quickly. Okay. Get it, get it quickly. That's okay. That's okay. And I think also like what to what we can learn here is that you know, like uh, you know, like as people doesn't matter also start like our own economy, you know, through all these side side hustles. I don't, I don't like calling them side hustles, through all these like extra uh, our income uh, stuff that we, that we start in, we yeah. can all start our own economy, we can all start our own stock exchanges, you know, it, I think it all, it all depends on us, you know, because at the end of the day, when you do something, as you must do it with a mind of uh, that, that, that working mind. So if everyone in a team has, uh, has got the same mindset of, of wanting to work, trust me, you're going to end up building a good high performance team. But then yeah. once, uh, once there's a bit of a, a weakling there, then uh, all of a sudden the team goes down. So yeah, no, sorry, man. I, I feel like you were back. Did you want to actually uh, further add on because uh, yes. we had to get the door, but now we are back. So I just decided to add, add some of my stuff there, but yeah. Yeah, so as I was still saying that, like you just have to find something that you love mm-hmm. and not be scared to be seen starting small because if you want to achieve greatness in this world, you have to be willing to start small. No one was born a millionaire or a billionaire, except for people, of course, that were born mm-hmm. from families that have already like established themselves and whatnot. But with a lot of us, black child, like we were not born with like gold or silver in our hands. You know, like we have to go out there and dig it by ourselves and for ourselves. Because truly, if we are looking at the economic crisis that we are faced with, like there is no hope for us. We only have ourselves to basically create opportunities for ourselves and explore opportunities out there. And people should, um, especially the youth, they should refrain from um, just thinking everything is a scam without even exploring it. Like find information, you have Google, you have everything at your disposal to ensure that um, whatever you, you are deciding to embark on is something that is, you know, like profitable and something that would benefit you in the long run. And, um, you know, like there's, there's so many things to be done. No, I was so inspired by that. I don't know if it was a lady or a guy, but they started farming with their three, 300 grants that they were getting for the COVID relief, you know. And today they sure. are one of the big people mm-hmm. in the agricultural industry, you know. And that, that is someone that truly started small, you know. So, like, you can be great at anything that you do as long as you love it. And as long as you go out there and get the information about it, make sure that you're equipped because no one, can become successful at anything if they are not equipped about what they do. You need to be very equipped and know the ins and outs of whatever kind of business that you are embarking on so that you can stand your ground. And don't be scared to be challenged. You know, like entrepreneurs eat challenges for breakfast. It's challenges that mold us to become the great people that we are. You know, it's through those challenges that we learn how to stand and, and, and truly be firm during test, testing times because entrepreneurship is truly testing. It's not easy, you know. But then when it pays off, it does pay off and really well, and it's mm-hmm. worth it. It's worth every struggle that you go through. So, yeah. I, I, I like the fact that you also mentioned that, you know, one has to, one has to equip themselves. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's very, very important. And I also wanted to add that as well, as a person, you also need to be, like, strategic because, you know, like, as an entrepreneur, you're gonna, maybe you might want to start a business now, then you're gonna yeah. go out into the market maybe and sell, and then you, fi- you find that people are not buying, right? Or even if they buy, you always need to go back and try and re-strategize. So you always need to go back and reflect, you know, yeah. and check, you know, what went, what went, what went right, you know, yeah. what went wrong, 
how can we improve maybe yeah. do we need to yeah. maybe uh relook, relook at our pricing you know or do we need to relook at maybe how we're pre presenting our products to the people and stuff like that so yeah yeah i i actually uh like that point that you made so hey i don't know i think you you, you said a mouthful in terms of closing remarks and yeah, yeah i feel like this was a fruitful interview I'm sure whoever watched actually learned so much, you know? And yeah. I feel like people can always go back and rewatch this video again, you know, yeah. if they really want to get, get, get some ideas, if they want to get some inspiration, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I think from my side, yeah, that's about it. You were an awesome guest. And I can see actually that, you know what, uh, the products that you are selling, you are using them because, you know, most people were so, uh, who will sell a product, but uh, they don't use it that much. So how can you expect someone to buy what you don't use it, right? So you're gonna tell you, you you're gonna sell me, you're gonna sell me this healthy product, but you're not using it, or you're gonna sell me this this nice maybe face cream or something, but you're not yeah. using it. So how, how are you gonna expect me to use it? Because yeah. I'm not even gonna even even trust what you're sending to me, right? So I can yeah. see that from your point of, point of time, it's like actually the product starts with you. Before it yes. goes out uh, to, to other people, you so, have to yeah. be the product of your products. Like I always say, you just have to be the product of the products. You know, you cannot be seen um, crusty yet. You say it will make you glow. Like we have products that make you look beautiful, but are you beautiful? You know, so it's just you. You just have to use what you sell. People must need from you as well. Yeah, you have to. Okay. Mm. No, no problem. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, guys. Uh, this is this is a wrap. I think uh, uh, in this interview, I think the next person that we're gonna interview is also gonna be a lady as well. She stays in Cape Town. Yeah, it's all about women empowerment. Hey, women are taking over. What's happening to the guys? I tell you, what's happening with with us men? Ah, uh, you know, like I, it, it, it looks like we guys are laid back. We know we're not only laid back. Uh, we're not only laid back in the industry, right? But I yeah. feel like we're also more laid back at, at church. You know, at church, you, you expect, you know, like guys to take over or, or, or at any other religious institute, right? Or even yeah. traditionally, you know, uh, culturally, you, you expect men to take the lead. But nowadays, it looks like women are taking over. Like, what's, what, what's happening? What's causing this big shift? The women are <laughs> But then another thing, like, you know, uh, just outside the interview, like what you're saying now, I feel like there's more focus on young girls than there is on guys. And this is a gap that okay. we need to be very careful about in, this, in our societies, you know, in our country. Like the focus is so much on the girls that the boys are left neglected. You know? And my worry is that, like, you cannot expect... You know, like... You, oh, oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, you should. Mm -hmm. So I, I was saying that I also remember that this other guy, uh, uh, let me not say this other guy, uh, he was a good leader, I think, at Northwest University. It's from Ghani Mashangu. He's very, he's very influential, right? And it did actually touch on the, on the, on the point of, you know, how the boy child is being. It's like, you know, like the boy child, you know, nowadays it's like, you expect now the boy child to to be like in prison, you know. So everything actually that's that's negative now is being associated yeah. with the boy child. Yeah. Whereas let's say for example now everything now nowadays is also going to uh to the girl child because you also remember like I think there was once uh in this instance whereby I participated in terms of okay uh, we're gonna go to certain schools you know and we're gonna teach them how to how to code. But you find that uh, in those schools, that the people that we're teaching, uh, that the problem was mainly for, for girls, you know? And you ask yourself, like, why why uh, uh, actually are, uh, is, uh, are the males, like, being neglected more? But at the same time, besides them being neglected, why are the actually men not also not fighting to occupy space? Yeah. You get Because you can see that, okay, the male child is being neglected, but why, why aren't you guys fighting to also occupy space? Or is it because... Maybe we guys, maybe we may be comfortable in being in clubs more. Maybe we're comfortable in, in let's say, for example, having fun. I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very deep topic. It's a very, very deep yeah, subject. Yeah, I think it's also to... I think it's something that needs to truly yeah. look at. Me. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I feel like maybe it's, it's one thing that you guys also, also invite a group of influential guys, you know, and we, we talk about these things. Yeah, well, um, but at the same time, even though women are, are, are becoming more empowered now, right? But also, you still find that in, in most positions, uh, a lot of positions, especially executive ones, especially government ones, they're still being occupied by guys as well. So I don't know. I think it's just a matter of 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 of, of, of how do we how, how are we influencing? Because you find that women actually, I give them the credit, they are occupying the spaces. You know, like a woman, you can leave a woman like like that with a child and not take it from the you like no, this child this child is not mine. You know, you're not gonna take care of this child. And then a woman will just uh, uh, you know what make something out of nothing. Maybe she'll get depressed for for a certain period of time, but afterwards, once once she picks herself up, you know, her motivation is going to be the child. You get what I'm trying to say. So I feel like in a way, maybe we guys, you know, we we we, we run away too easily, you know. Uh, I feel like maybe we are more comfortable in a way. But I think it's yeah, it's something that we we really need to sit down, you know, talk about, dissect it properly, you know, and also uh, uh, think of like how do we go to prisons how do we change the mindset you know uh, 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 in prisons how do we change the mindset maybe even go to clubs. how do we even change the mindset in prisons in clubs you know because now people need people actually need that motivation you know people need to because like you also spoke about you know like your spending right in the, in the, inter- in the interview you spoke about your spending but how you decided to become more responsible how you decided to to, to, to to limit on funds. So those are things that we actually can also talk about, you know, with other guys that, you know, like in certain instances, you need to maybe try safe, maybe you need to focus, you know, like on doing other ventures, you know, because as a guy, you need to be busy, man, you know. Uh, she shouldn't really be, not even as a guy, like as a human being, you need to be busy. You mustn't actually be, yeah, mustn't be either. So, yeah. No, thank you very much. It was a good interview. Uh, even though, let's say, we started taking because of some technical glitches, but yeah, we we learn from this, and yeah. let's see what the next interview has in store for us. Thank you very much. Thank you so so much. Skin. Have a lovely one. Have a lovely one. I'm closing it. Sure. Bye. Bye. Bye.